What's going on guys and girls and welcome back to the bench. I've spoken about different types of coax, brands, etc. Right now it's specifically only going to be Times Microwave. I don't recommend any other brand of coax really. I've used Times Microwave with 100% success for many years, many applications. I really don't recommend the 400 in the solid, you know, copper drawn over aluminum. The 240 solid is okay, but it's stiff. You don't really want any of that RG400. The specifications are hardly any better than like RG58AU, really. Usually the people that use that don't have soldering abilities. You want to stick with the Times microwave. Is it more fragile if you slam it in a door? <laughs> Don't slam it in a door. Yes, that's the most difficult to solder with the reducer. The 400 UF, excuse me, yeah, yeah. The Ultraflex, that's, that's really good coax also. I really highly recommend it by Times Microwave. What I'm gonna talk about here is the 600, and I'm gonna try to cover a few different things. It's gonna cover a topic for a broad range of actual users from base stations to mobiles. This might help you in your mobiles, you know, the smaller radios, barefoot size, specialize in the barefoot mobile radios. That's my specialty. Yes, I, many have realized throughout the decades I've done a lot more. Anyways, before you spend some money on your base stations, yes, the uh, AL80s have been showing up left and right. Yes, I am really backed up with projects. I gotta stop them for a while. We will do more videos on the new 955 V2. Just be patient. Patience, patience. This here, you'll, you'll see the uh, model number. Let me get a picture. Like that. Okay. I think that was in me. That's a better picture. Very handy device. Okay, see, so if you're using 600 UF, the specifications are really good on the 600 UF by Times Microwave. I urge you to do the research. If you're going to be going like 100 foot or so, and you want to be able to hear really good, you got a radio that's tuned on a real bench inside of a Faraday cage, it's really where it's going to matter. You don't want to have any loss. My loss is like 0.2 dB. Yes, it's a freak of nature, but that's what it is. It's really good. I wanted to be able to hear. And I talk to my barefoot radios from time to time up there, even in DX. Some bases, some mobiles. But hearing is the most important for me. No loss. That's reciprocal also. So, this little guy. It's made out of uh, aluminum. The inside's Teflon and the silver connector through the center. This is an LC connector, a connector that connects to L a big times microwave LMR 600 UF. It's not listed that it does, but you'll find the part number under the 600. The pin will actually fit the male side of this that screws on and that can be soldered inside pretty much by anybody just a little bit of soldering skills nice and clean preparation anyone can do it the rest of the fitting is a compression fitting I got pictures video the easiest way to do it would be to find it on my Facebook page Everyone knows I'm against compression fittings for outdoor use, especially, you know, I'm the mobile guy. When I put up an antenna, put something together, I like to do it one time. So, the only compression fitting that's in my shop or connected to anything is inside my shop right now. It's up there, right? I can't drag it down. My radio's up there. <clears throat> so... There's only one compression fitting when it goes together. You can look at the pictures in one solder joint. The solder joint goes inside of here. I'm going to show you this so I can show you the actual electrical length also. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, I'm touching the outside there. 
Watch how far down it goes. See that? Okay, so now where my fingernail is here to where my fingernail is about right there, those two points, that's the electrical length of it when assembled. Now you could use this. Now see what I use this for is this connects to my radio. Instead of having to use one of these. I'll get into that in a minute. You can use any connector that you see fit on these little blocks. You can change the configuration as many times as you want. BNC, DIN 76, SMA, anything that you want, you can reconfigure this, male to female, etc. Using high-end, you know, bird equipment. This is a different brand, but it still has Teflon and silver. <clears throat> And when you look at this, and look at the, here by the way, this is a line section, a bird line section. You can see the two screw holes there. See the two screw holes there? See the ends? That's what, that's what that would go to. That's what this is. This can be used for quite a few things. Just the barefoot mobile, you don't need to even be thinking about this, but the guys that, are, that have got the barefoot mobiles, you're going to the base stations, with me, etc. Pay attention or save this video for future reference. Yes, this has a line section. The sampler could be put in here. You can use multiple. You can use a, there's some of them where they're on the back side so you don't increase length. Length can be an issue. And you could also go up to three long. And you'll see a lot of the key down guys doing that with their meters. And they're wrapping up their engines and alternators getting voltages. They, they kind of need to see that. Usually on a bench, you don't want to see any meter farms. Too many issues going on with that with all the connectors and hocus pocus. So anyways, I use one of these for the sampler. I've already shown that. But I'm gonna, what I want to show you is, look at the electrical length. If I get this all lined up here. Remember my thumbnail about right there. Thumbnail about right there. It's less than half of that length, electrically plus physically. And remember, you can change these to anything you want. Be careful with the bird ones, they're actual silver. I drop this once, so I just straighten it back out. But again, you can change this to anything you want. Now you could do something like this, if you had to. It would be an added connector, and I wouldn't do that. You, know, you can use a BNC connector, but you keep adding, you're causing more and more problems and peds bumps, even though it's all good stuff, you, you still does. But you can still get one of these that fit that. Anything that you need that you can imagine with RF will work. For instance, understanding the, the actual physical to electrical length and the impedance changes, whether it's at the one wavelength or the odd multiple, the impedance will change. I don't use this to tune the antenna, I solely use this. Yes, the calculators online will kind of get you close, but that is far from reality. There's much more to it than that. But anyways, see I can connect that, as you can see. Right? Any combination. What you do is just change those four little screws. Uh, let's check this out. And by the way, the coax, the connectors, the, getting back to like the connectors to my coax, there are copper eyelets fitted perfectly over the gauge of wire. Nothing crimped or nothing like that. Like sweating pipes. A lot of time was put into it. So my shockwave, I'm not just promoting the shockwave antenna. There's other antennas out there. But for you guys that do live in raunchy weather, this would be one way that you'd be able to do this. Like I've just shown you with this, to shrink it down to size, to get whatever you need, whatever kind of coupling. And outside with the shockwave, I've shown it where I took the angle grinder, cut off the brackets, removed the PL259 connector, and I went direct with copper eyelets. They're bent, fitted, connected to the 
bolt that goes to the hairpin, ground shield, connector right there. Everything, no extra straps, nothing. Nothing. And two with a half wavelength. Then I have my one wavelength wire that was cut long. You've seen it. You'll see the masking tape. It's all there in the pictures. Pay attention to it. Oh, for instance, not only is you know your antenna system, your coax, like the most important number one thing is the bench that your radio is tuned on. Neither coming or going. That's the most important part. Okay? Shut that back off. My next step is another 955 on the bench. Hopefully you got something out of this. You're probably sitting there thinking, oh man, I could do this. Oh man, I could do that. Oh, I could do this or I could have done that. You're right. Look at it. It's really cool. It's a cool thing. So are these. But if you're not going to be using this, you don't want that added length and weight and all that extra. That's a lot of money. They both cost money. But on the outside, if you're going to use the 600 by Times Microwave UF, anyone can solder with practice the conductor and the ground shield. Yep. I wouldn't try to run this type of coax in the winter time. No. It's too stiff. You have to plan every single move, every sixteenth of an inch, because it is stiff. Once you get everything organized and everything soldered correctly, then you can go out there, connect it to your antenna, and nothing will get pulled apart. And it should remain there if installed correctly with the right hardware with dielectric grease for many years to come. Like I said before, when you have the coax on the inside, there's only one other solder joint that you have to perform. And that's on the pin that goes inside of here on the other end of this mail. I, I shown it, I got pictures. Just scroll down my Facebook page. One solder joint, just one. And the rest is a compression fitting. But remember, that compression fitting is gonna be in your shack. It's never gonna get wet, I hope, you know, I hope. <laughs> I hope for everybody, you and your radio, and hope nothing ever gets wet, but that's the only soldering that you have to do. You can solder, solder copper eyelets on 8 gauge wire, and that's about what the 600's like. You can do this. Sit down, don't try to do it in five minutes. Plan it all out, every little step. And I assure you, if you use times, not generic, do all the math, tune it all correctly with a half wavelength or a one wavelength. The half is the best. Figure out how to use a ladder, do whatever you gotta do. No, it's not easy. It takes time and effort. And I, I, I mentioned this today on the radio today to somebody. Well, everybody's hating on me for trying to show facts and educate. The hardest part, well, the bench, having a real bench isn't an easy task and it's expensive to maintain. Number two, well, you have to actually do all the work, but you have to have the bench first. Faraday cage for the receive, and especially now with the skip coming. Ooh, all that interference trying to tune your radio is the customer following directions. That is the hardest part of this business. Is for the consumer to follow directions. You'd be amazed. Everybody wants one of these fine-tuned radios, but I have to weigh it out who gets them and how you respond to me. I can't spend all this time building a radio and you're just gonna hook it up to some junk and expect it to work like better than what you had before. It might just a little bit. The only time you're gonna really see a big difference, even if you do what I say for the antenna systems, is when you do what I say, the, all the grounding, counterpoise, ARP and DC potential solder joints. Then when you put it all together and it's tuned, I'm Matt, and you do everything I say. There's no other way to put it. A lot of people call me all kinds of weird names. I'm not gonna sit here and sugarcoat babies, babysit nothing or nobody. 
This is number one. The snow hocus pocus. We've shown this God only knows how many times. And the voltage and how everything is actually tuned on the real deal. So the foundation is the bench that your radio is tuned on. If you buy the coax from me, you might use that half wavelength as a jumper between your radio and your amp and you buy multiple coaxes. The coax, in other words, that connector. So we got some available. There's one that's done, okay? This stuff, yeah, that stuff. And how it's done, it's not an easy task. All the materials, very time consuming. So when everything is done correctly as a standard, only until then will everything really shine. Like my saying, you make them ring, ring, okay? And I'll make them sing. But one little screwed up joint, just one. One little mishap, trying to save a nickel here and there. It's never gonna work right. Yeah, you'll get out. But when these little mud duck radio spine tune rip your lips off, <laughs> you'd be scratching your head. He's got a million watts, or let me look under the trunk, or some kind of BS. Yep, yep, yep. So many old timers are sitting back and laughing. Okay. Got that part? Most important part. If you got a, an icon me as you can would, new stuff, don't worry about it. You don't need to have anything done to that radio. Don't let anybody touch them unless it's yours and you know what you're doing. I know there's guys out there that do. There's a lot of cool, I've been talking a lot of cool sounding radios out there. This year, this time of year, everybody's showing up with other cool stuff. And respect to you guys. Yep, there's some really cool radios, and they're all saying, "Yep, that's." And if you're not, I say that's the most important part. So you got to have your radio see this. No matter what, nothing else is going to be more important for your radio than this. If it's an export radio, I can't express how important that is. The same goes for the receiver the type of RF generator and the tone that it produces and how it's done, like in a Faraday cage. All right, I know that's making people mad, dislike, dislike, but it's the facts. It's nothing but facts. I think I covered everything. I don't want to repeat myself and bore you guys. I didn't know about this until not too long ago. So it was a menagerie to hook everything up. I really like the Times Microwave LMR 600 UF. It's not cheap, it's very expensive. You don't want to waste any. And if you do buy some, get a foot or two extra. And make sure that when you go to use it and work with it, it's not winter time. I can't see myself trying to screw with it at all in the winter time. It'd be too stiff. I spent my last 4th of July a year or so ago putting all this stuff together. There's a lot of work, there's a lot of planning. But uh, even with the shock wave, all the wind we have out here, it hasn't snowed this year yet. It might snow, it did a little bit. I'm not gonna call it snow, considering I'm an ex-Yankee or I'm a damn Yankee is what some people call it. I know what bad weather is, whether it's in a truck or living in it, I've done both, a lot of it. You might wanna watch, maybe I'll put a link to another coax video. This would be for your base stations and maybe some of you, the bigger, 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 bigger radios out there. Some other guys recommend another type of coax versus the Times Microwave. I have no issues with it at all. I monitor it. I monitor my signal like you can't imagine. That's what that's all about. So I know it doesn't matter what someone else says. I know what my signal sounds like and how it's performing before you get it, if that makes sense, in a cool way. All right, it's pretty simple. I'm, I don't really dig on the regular screws or the blade screws, but that's how they come. These are some from Bird. 
Let me see, it's not junk. You can do whatever you gotta do with this. That's what they look like. I'm not gonna take mine apart now. That's how these look. This just slide, you take these four screws out, slide that out, and you slide that pin in. See that? There's the number again. Uh, I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. Watch all that hate out there. Ugh, so much hate. Don't be hating on the mailman. And safety first while you're out there trailer chucking. Try to be nice to everybody out there if you can. Mud Duck Radio in the desert. We're clear and gone. Bye-bye-bye.